Hey, how's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a JSON file, create some data in the JSON file, JSON code that is, then read that JSON file using JavaScript and pull the data from the JSON file using a sync await and insert it into this drop down menu. Okay, this will be a country, city, state, and zip code selector. This is actually on request video from you, the viewers. And it's actually a updated version from a previous project when we did almost the same thing, but we used the data within JavaScript. So we didn't create a database. Now, because some of you suggested or requested to actually extend this project and use data for a JSON file, I thought let's create one. I also changed up just a bit, little bit the CSS. So if you want to grab onto the code, oh, oh, by the way, so the HTML and the CSS are down in the description below. You can just download them. Also the JavaScript is down in the description below. I will not go through the explanation of how this works, only on how we can create a JSON file and get data from the JSON file and also verify if that is valid JSON file, because you can avoid a lot of errors if you use a JSON validator, first of all. So we're going to create the JSON file, we're going to use the JSON file to add some data to it, and then we're going to extract the data using a sync await in order to insert it in our drop down menu. Again, I'm not going to go over how this works, you can check out the previous video because I would just do a duplication of videos and I don't want that. So this is a pretty much fresh video. And this right here on the left side is the code from the previous video. So let's just go over this. We have a form with a drop down group. We have some selections within them and some options. And within our JavaScript file, we have our database. As you can see here, country, state, info. And we select, obviously, you can add more to this if you wish. And we have two countries, we have the US and we have Germany and we have two states within them. So California and Texas and Bavaria and Hessen in Germany. And we can select from each of them later on then different, uh, uh, different cities and, and within them different zip codes. Okay, exactly as you see here, if I would have selected US, then I could select California and Texas, let's select Texas, and I also want to move to Texas, we oui. and let's select Austin, and let's select the zip code. Okay, pretty simple. So if I would changes to Germany, so far and so on. Now this is momentarily getting its data, not from here, but it's, uh, let me also open up the previous project. So open with live server. Oh, by the way, we're using Visual Studio Code. So this is the previous project. As you can see, it works pretty much the same. Let's actually go to Germany, Germany, uh, Bavaria, Munich, and so far and so on. So we're going, this is the previous project. This is the new project. This is actually getting data from JSON, from a JSON file. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, now let's get started with our project. First things first, we're going to create a new folder. You can, if you are using the previous project, you can just go ahead and use that one. If not, if you're new to this video, then, um, and you didn't follow along with the other video, no problems, just go ahead and download. We're going to leave the previous project in the video description, just go ahead, download it. And within it, we're going to create a DB folder. Now you don't have to do this. You can obviously create a JSON file out here. I preferred creating a DB folder where I usually store all my data files. Within here, we're going to create a JSON file. Let's call this uh, load.json.json, obviously. You can name this anything that you want. Now, let's go ahead and copy this. I'm going to copy it and then, you know what, I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it, so cut it out and move it within here. Boom. I'm getting a couple of errors. This is because this is not a JSON format. You know, JSON are key value pairs. The keys and the values are always within quotations. And as you can see here, we're missing a couple of them. So how can we validate what is real JSON? And let me show you just a quick link. And it's called jsonlint.com. Uh, let me make this larger. So we're going to copy our code again and paste it in here and click on validate JSON. It will always tell us parse error, lint one, so far and so on. So this is not valid JSON. So if we want to change this to valid JSON, then we're going to remove this, boom. You can leave this to open and close curly backwards. You don't need to close it up here. Then you need to change this US into quotations. Well, sorry about that. So quotation mark before the US and after that, the same thing for Germany, the same thing then for California then Texas, then Dallas, Austin, Bavaria. So everything where we're everywhere where we're missing our quotations, or, although they were in here, hmm, what just happened? Okay, so let's just add quotations everywhere where we're missing them. And 
there we go. Now let's validate it. Let's see if this is valid, JSON. Uh, we're still missing something, boom, boom. So we got a US here, we got this here, and we have one comma that we don't need down here. Let's save again and let's validate JSON. Well, not save, sorry. <laughs> let's validate JSON, it's still not working. Wait, 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 I, I'm still missing something. Oh yeah, you, I don't need you, and I don't need you. Okay, so let's see, we also need to delete you. So we have you, US ends here, Germany ends here. So this is everything that needs to be separated. Now we are in another one. This ends here. So California is open and closed here. Texas does not need, because the last one does not need to have a print, a comma. Uh, Bavaria ends here and Hessen ends here. And it doesn't need to, so let's validate. Yep, now it's working. Okay, now let's copy this over into JSON, our JSON file. And now it's valid JSON, as you can see. I'm going to make this smaller again, and let's close up this project. So I'm going to close it up and only have our project opened. If you want to change the style, then just copy and paste in the new style. It's going to be boom, style JSON and replace it within your HTML. So copy this, comment this out. Actually, you can leave it commented in because it's just going to replace whatever it can replace. Boom, there we go. Okay, and now it's working. So if you wish to leave it as before, then please feel free to do so. I just change it up a bit in order for, for us to not have repetitive code. Okay, this is still working because I didn't save my JavaScript file. Now if I save it, it should no longer work. It cannot find any kind of data because we deleted it. Actually, uh, you know what? Ah, damn it, sorry about that. If you, you can obviously copy this again. I wanted to create another JavaScript file. So we have our JSON data. Now I'm going to copy the database back in, in our, in our JavaScript. So let's go down here and this should again now work. I'm going to create a new file. So we're going to create within here, a load JSON and dot JS file. And now if I think about it, let's, I made a mistake here. This should be actually our JSON file, our data file. So let's change this to data. So the JSON file, just change the name of the JSON file to data. Now let's go into our index.html and down here where it says main.js, copy it once and add the load.json.js file. Now this is empty, so we're going to comment out our main.json file. This will no longer work. Grab on to everything accepting, so everything in the load window, so you could just click on this, copy it and paste it into your JSON load.json file. Okay, and let's also let's go up here Let's take a look at our code. So as soon as the window loads, this is going to load. It's going to grab onto all of the DOM elements and load them. Okay, now first things first, let's grab on to our JSON data. And for this, we're going to use a sync await. So let's go up here where the code starts. So as soon as the window loads, we're going to use our async function. We can also use arrow functions, whatever you wish. Now we're going to call this, let's call this get country state info. Okay, open and close parenthesis. Within here, we're going to await, first of all, for the response of, of the fetch call. So we're going to call const response, and we're going to assign this to await res response. Okay, and await will fetch. We're going to wait for the fetch of the data. Now, because we are in a DB folder, within quotations, we're going to go ahead and choose the DB folder. So DB folder, and within the folder, we're going to use the data.json file. Now let's transform this into JSON. So we're going to create another cons. Let's call this data and the data, data that we're fetching. Again, we're going to use await. And now we're going to use on our response the dot JSON operator. Okay, so it knows it's fetching JSON. Now let's actually console log this. Let's open up here the console inspect. Let's go ahead, go to the console. And I don't need you. I know country state is not defined, but we're going to call it down here. So let's just load the function down here. And as soon as this loads, it's going to load the data. So let's hit save. And as you can see here, yeah, this is actually looking for country straight info from here. So don't worry about this error. Where do we have it? Uh, here, okay. Still looking for this. This doesn't exist anymore because we deleted it. If you take a look in our previous code, this was this data file or not this data file. This was this mockup data. Okay, now we load it this async await function and this function grabbed on to our JSON data from here and transform it to JSON data and output it here. 
Okay, you can see we have still the same data. Now, how can we use our data? Well, I just go down here. We're going to close our console. And now in our function, let's go ahead and use the then operator. And within here, we're going to call our data. There's a callback function. And this callback function will assign the data to this variable right here. Okay, so I'm going to exactly as we had here, I'm going to create a const country state info. So let's just copy the name const country state info is equal to data. Now the data is currently not returned because we have the data within this console log. So I'm just going to comment this out and return the data. And just to prove that it works, we're going to move this console log, or we're going to console log the country state data here. Okay, and this should do exactly the same thing. So if I hit inspect, I should always see in my console an object that has the same data. Okay, perfect. Now this is not working yet because all you need to do now is move everything from here. So after you get country state info, move this code, grab onto it, command X, just cut it out and move it into your callback function. So in here, hit save and now voila, there's the data. Okay, simple as that. Let's change it to Germany. They should also work Bavaria, Munich and boom. Okay, simple as that. So let's recap. We used a callback function. This runs as soon as the Windows loads. It's going to await, it's going to fetch the data using await from our database. So if you just have it outside, let me just show you if I would have this data outside here. Hey, come on, copy and paste it out here. Jesus. Okay, let's move the copy outside. Yep, move it outside. Let's call this data too. If I would want to use this data, you didn't create it in your database folder, then just replace this with data two. Hit save and it should do the same thing. It's still working as you can see. Then we grab onto our data, use the JSON operator. We returned this as data, run the function, use the then operator on it, assign the data to this country state info. We could have just used data in here, but I, let me also comment out this console log so you don't have unnecessary code. You could have just used this data within here, but I wanted to assign it to a different variable so you don't have to replace this all over the place. Okay, simple as that. You can see this working. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned with all of my newest videos. Also, I'm almost done with the advanced HTML and CSS course, also including SAS. So that will be out at the beginning of September, I believe. And with this being said, thank you very much for watching. Stay cool, stay healthy, and catch you next time. Bye-bye.